Good evening, a warm welcome to all of you to the webinar series hosted by Advocates Association Bengaluru. We have with us today Mr. Vishwanath V. Angadi, former City Civil and Sessions Judge Bengaluru. Sir, we are highly privileged to have you with us today. Welcome to the webinar. Awesome. Namaste, sir. Good evening to all. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our today's speaker, Mr. Vishwanath V. Angadi, graduated law from University Law College, Darwad, and obtained his master's degree in law from Karnataka University. He joined the Karnataka State Judiciary directly as a district judge in the year 1996. Mr. Angadi has served as a special judge to try the multi crore fake stamp paper case. He has also served as a principal district and sessions judge at Haveri, Belgam, Karwa, that is Uttar Kannada, and principal city civil and sessions judge at Bengaluru. He has served as the presiding officer of the Karnataka State Transport Appellate Tribunal at Bangalore. Mr. Angadi has also served as a Registrar Vigilance and Registrar Judicial at the High Court of Karnataka. He has also served as the director of the Bangalore Mediation Center. As a judge, Mr. Angadi cleared more than 28,000 cases in Lokadalat in the district of Belgam during the year 2009 and 10. Also took steps to clear more than four. 0.72 lakhs cases in Lokadalat held in Bengaluru in 2014. He has passed several judgments in civil and criminal matters. He has keen interest in academics and has taught law in colleges of Bangalore, Darwad, and Hubali. Presently, Mr. Angadi is a guest faculty at the Karnataka Judicial Academy, Bangalore. Karnataka Police Academy, Mysore, Administrative Training Institute, Mysore, Karnataka State Law University, and Karnataka State Bar Council. He is also on the panel of Arbitration and Conciliation Center, handling both domestic and international arbitrations. On behalf of Advocates Association, Bengaluru, I extend a warm welcome to you. Over to you, sir. Namaste, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Srikram, and also advocates of the Bangalore Bar, respected seniors, and my junior advocates of Bangalore and across many parts of our state. I also greet my viewers from across various parts of our state and other places. The topic given for study in this webinar is very interesting. It is rather current also, and it is also not that new also. As you all know, pendency of cases in the courts in India is on the high rise every day. And due to this pandemic, I'm sure advocates will endorse my view that disposals are now at the lowest ebb. And judges also cannot work now more because of restrictions and other barriers. The topic is need for expeditious and speedy trial of civil cases, tools and techniques. As we all know, civil cases, they constitute most of the pendency of in the law courts in our country, as also in the high court and the apex court at New Delhi. And we are concerned with civil trial. The frequently used provisions of the CPC, as all advocates know extremely well, or 18 rules of CPC to recall the witness, or 17 of CPC regarding grant of adjournments by the courts, order 8 of the CPC delay in filing of doublets by the defendant, or 12, rule 6, order 10 of CPC, order 11 of CPC, 
section 30 of cpc and to quote lastly order 37 of the cpc concerning summary suits or summary trial in many cases most of the ias concern ia of recall of the witnesses examined by the other party for the purpose of further adjunct in chief or for further cross examination by the adversary and so also one more branch is grant of adjournments grant of adjournments derails the system and also delays the progress of the case and in every case once appearing for the plaintiff or defendant as the case may be in those IAS under order 18 to 17 or order 17 of the CPC etc makes out these important grounds the first ground is no prejudice will be caused to the other side if the witness is recalled by the court number two in the end of justice and fair play let the court allow the application by granting time or recall of the witness the third point is let court levy cost will pay cost due to us the opportunity and in some cases both parties consent and by consent the court allows the application or applications and court is a party to the said order because court consents court allows the application filed by the party for recall or for adjournment my point is are there a set of rules which govern the court proceedings or only these important four factors can the court keep in mind and then go forward in a case before the apex court just some time back there were two suits they were clubbed in one case there was delay of five years in filing of ws in other matter which is connected matter the delay was 13 years five years delay in first suit second suit delay was 13 years the cases were tried by the single judge of high court of bombay single judge of the high court of bombay allowed the IA for permission to file the place at a very late stage by imposing cost of rupees 5 lakhs the dp of the high court also confirmed the said order Thereafter, the plaintiff approached the Supreme Court. What Supreme Court did is our concern. This is a live case, food for thought for you. You may, act, you may give the answer after some time or at the appropriate point of time. The second point is, this time limit of 30 days to file the place. Then, nextly, the court granting further time of 90 days. In all, the maximum limit is 120 days to file the place from date of service of suit summons on the defendant under our eight rule one of the CPC. Can court condone delay in filing of? the ws beyond this outer limit of 120 days or not some rulings they state that the court can condone delay of even a month or two months or some more months also and permit the other side to file the ws whether this ruling is elastic in the context of commercial disputes tried by commercial courts under 
the province of commercial courts act or not is the question time limit of maximum of 120 days from date of service of suit summons on the defendant is it what is called as imperative or mandatory or is it directory or not because this is a new segment and we got cases on this point only of last year and currently of this year after the month of February 2020. This is the second scenario. The third point is, and all these problems which I'm posing, they are governed by case laws of the Apex Court. The third scenario is, in a suit filed by the plaintiff for a given relief, the different files replace court frames issues. Then after court posts the matter for evidence of the plaintiff, on the first stage, plaintiff was absent, court date was given. Second, it also plaintiff was absent, the date was given by court by itself. On third date also, the plaintiff remained absent. Then the court could have dismissed suit for default. As we all know, plaintiff is absent continuously for the past six months, three dates he is absent, court normally dismisses the suit filed by the plaintiff for default. In this case, the trial court judge invoked the provisions of Order 17 of the CPC and closed the side of the plaintiff. Plaintiff absent since last three days. He may note of everything. Side of plaintiff was closed. The matter was posted thereafter for evidence of defendant. Defendant told, sir, plaintiff has remained absent. I don't know defense evidence. He closed his side. The matter went for arguments. On that day also in the morning, the plaintiff was absent. Counsel was absent. And the counsel appearing for defendant told, sir, I have no arguments because plaintiff has remained absent. And the court rendered a regular judgment. Whether is it proper or not is the question before the court. My point is, spirit trial is the topic and there I'm teaching this important case of the Apex Court. Then in this case, what happened? The trial court rendered judgment, passed a decree, dismissing suit of plaintiff. Then the plaintiff came to court and he took copy of judgment, filed appeal to the next court. Appellate court also confirmed the order of the trial court. High court also confirmed the order of the trial court. The matter went to the Supreme Court of India. Plaintiff absent. Judge did not pass order dismissing suit for default. He rendered judgment on merits. Without evidence of the plaintiff, the court of frame issues. What Supreme Court did is the question before the court in the Supreme Court. So this is the third scenario. So like this, I will touch before you all important decisions of the Supreme Court of India dealing with speedy trial and disposal of the suits, important tools and techniques. And before that, my preface is that advocates in many cases quote decisions on a given point, say order 8 rule 1, order 7 rule 11 CPC, as the case may be, they just raise uh, before the court and they say they read the head note or they read sorts of paragraph, they say apply this ruling sir, grant relief to the uh, grant relief as per the said ruling. My point is, what is precedent? Without discussing facts of a reported decision, we cannot just read only the ratio, apply it mechanically for the case before court and pass order. And for this, I will quote the decision of Supreme Court of India in the case of Bharat Petroleum 
corporation versus n r wire money that is uh, 2004 scc part number 8 page 579 in the addition they have extracted what lord denning of england observed in the context of president how to follow president and the important checks and balances i will read the relevant paragraph lest if i just read or tell by my own words the flavor and taste may be lost as you all know we have a sip of coffee in the coffee board i mean uh, for there near the court i go and uh, we cannot have same test at some other place so i will just read the relevant paragraph each uh, the following words of lord denning mr in the matter of applying precedents have become locus classicus i quote each case depends on its own facts and a close similarity between one case and another is not enough because even a single significant detail may alter the entire aspect in deciding such cases one should avoid the temptation to decide as said by corozo by matching the color of one case against the color of another to decide therefore on which side of the line a case falls the broad resemblance to another case is not all decisive unquote president should be followed only so as it marks the path of justice but you must cut the dead wood and trim off the side branches else you will find yourself lost in the thickets and branches my plea is to keep the path to justice clear of obstructions which would in it so this is the important classic words of denning lord denning mr of uk which is quoted in the judgment of supreme court of india of 2004 so with this backdrop i will start one by one the cases regarding the disposal of cases in a speedy manner and to begin with the first case is regarding order 18 rule 17 of the cpc read with order 17 rule 1 of the cpc the first case is namely 2016 part 14 scc 142 that is gayatri versus m girish this is a case of our own high court a case was before the circuit court bangalore and in that case before the circuit court bangalore the defendant had entered appearance the court had framed issues the trial court recorded the evidence of the witness pitable man who was quite aged and the matter was postponed for what what of pitable pitable man repeatedly and time of 3 years and 8 months was taken by the defendant to complete the cross examination of pw1 there was filing of repeated ias by the defendant for recall of pw1 and the court twice allowed the said ias subject to terms but still the defendant was not willing to come forward to on his name pw1 and the last ia filed by the defendant to recall pw1 for further cross was dismissed by the additional civil court judge as per detailed order so 3 years and 8 months had gone only for closing cross examination of pw1 the matter went to the high court high court at the very threshold 
confirmed the order passed by the trial judge. The defendant went in appeal to the Supreme Court of India. Supreme Court of India in the above case also confirmed orders passed by the trial court and the high court by stating in clear words that there is a use of process of court by the defendant because in spite of grant of time of three years, eight months, and the court had given seven adjournments for cause of credible one, there was no part of the defendant committed court and the cause of examining credible one. So the Supreme Court of India confirmed all the passed by the trial court judge, and also our high court, by dismissing the said particular case with the cost. So the said ruling states in very clear terms that the grounds urged were mother of senior was not well, one ground. Second ground was busy in another court, second, uh, second ground. And so like this, there were giving of opportunities by the court on the previous occasions, but the Supreme Court did not permit the said act of the defendant. The Apex Court laid down the ratio that uh, I had to recall cannot be allowed by the court to fill up the lacuna in the evidence of the witness. So the Apex Court in the above case laid down the ratio that uh, the court cannot permit further cross of PW1, as the case may be, to fill up lacuna in the case and that if the attitude of the defendant is to protract case, then the same should be curbed by the court. And in this case, time of three years and eight months was wasted on account of the tactics of the advocate for the defendant, namely the defendant in this case, which the Supreme Court did not approve of. The Apex Court dismissed the appeal at admission with cost of rupees 50,000 to be paid by the defendant. So here, the first case states that IA to recall a witness cannot be filed by a party to protect the case for no valid reason. Number two, IA to recall the witness cannot be allowed to fill up the lacunae in the case or to, to get withdrawn admissions made by the party in his oral evidence before the court. This is the first case. The second case is namely a case wherein that is uh, uh, 2016 part 11 SCC page number 296 Ram Rati versus Mange Ram. In this case, a aid for a call of witness was filed by the defendant and in this case the trial court allowed the IA filed by the defendant for a call of the witness. High court also confirmed the order of the trial court and here the plaintiff went in appeal to Supreme Court of India. Supreme Court of India allowed the appeal of the plaintiff and set aside orders passed by the trial court and of the high court. Because in this case, the first court observed that uh, a for recall cannot be permitted to be allowed to fill up lacunae or omission. And here, the ground made out by the defendant was for further elaboration on leftover points. The Apex Court observed that this is not permissible. So we see the second case where recall of witness ordered by the trial court and high court was satisfied by the Supreme Court of India. The third important case is namely 2013 AIR SCW 1564. That is Messrs. Bagai Construction versus Messrs. Gupta Building Material Store. Here, our seven rule three of CPC read with 
or 18 rule 17 of the CPC. What is order 7 rule 3 says? While filing suit before the court, you must file suit documents. If you don't file the suit documents on date of filing of the suit, the next point is during evidence or after the court frames issues, you must tender the suit documents. In this case, what happened is that it was a case for recovery of some amount of dues. The plaintiff led the evidence and the defendant also led the evidence. The matter was posted for arguments. The matter was parted. At that stage, the plaintiff filed application praying the court to permit him to reopen the case because he had not produced the suit document, the suit pronote, or the suit, uh, what you call, uh, document as the case may be in that case. In this case, it so happened that uh, the I was filed under order 7, rule 14, and also IA number 2 was filed under order 18, rule 17 of uh, the CPC. Here, the additional DJ, the trial court dismissed both the IAs because suit document was not produced by the plaintiff, at least as on the rate of recording of the evidence. And the, thereafter, the plaintiff went to the High Court. High Court of Delhi allowed both applications, permitted the plaintiff to file suit document and lead further evidence. And the other side, the defendant went to the Supreme Court by your appeal. Supreme Court of India confirmed the order passed by the ADJ, the trial court, and set aside the order passed by the High Court. My point is, IA to the open case by the plaintiff to recall PW1 or further chief and to produce the document. When the court has heard the matter on its merits, the High Court turned down the IAs by setting aside order passed by the High Court. My point is, this ruling states that nobody can stall the progress of the case and court in fit cases must apply the given legal aspects and pass appropriate orders. The point is, court cannot mechanically allow a file by a party for the call of the witness. So with that, the next important point is the 2013 AIR SCW 933 Noor Mohammed versus Jaitanand. In this case, the facts are namely Suit was filed for grant of a prohibitory injunction. That is not to alienate the suit property by the defendant. And the defendant appeared and filed the counterclaim. The parties led evidence. Thereafter, the trial court dismissed the suit of the plaintiff but allowed the counterclaim of the particular defendant. Appeal was filed by the plaintiff to the district judge, which was dismissed. And thereafter, second appeal was filed before High Court of Rajasthan. The said appeal was pending for more than 10 years before High Court of Rajasthan. And on one fine day in 2011, High Court of Rajasthan stayed operation of order passed by the trial court. This order was challenged by the other side in the Supreme Court of India. The Supreme Court, Supreme Court of India heavily came on the High Court of Rajasthan by stating that the High Court did not frame substantial question of law under Section 100 of the CPC and stay of the case by the High Court is not proper. And it just discussed how 10 years elapsed in the High Court to 
even take the matter of admission and the apex court laid down broad guidelines as to how the courts the trial courts as to how the high courts of the country state should regulate the disposal of cases before the trial courts a matter of 10 years old appeal was stayed by the high court of uh, after a long gap of 10 years from later data filing of the appeal supreme court in this case passed the directions and uh, disposed of the appeal accordingly this is a court case where the apex court intervened and stated as to how the courts must take steps to dispose of the cases with that the next important point is uh, that is uh, 2011 part 9 scc 678 give a cortex versus tirgun auto plast private limited so in this case is the fact of this case i have discussed to you just at 65 uh, or 610 so it was filed by the plaintiff for grant of injunction and also this is a suit for declaration and to restore the position of the suit property and also for recovery of and, and also because the property worth was rupees 60 lakhs as per the court's order so the, these are the facts of the case in this case what to happen the defendant was served he appeared the court framed issues mat was posted on 16 2006 for evidence of the plaintiff on the day when he was absent the court posted matter to 32 2007 on the day also when he was absent then the matter posted on 10 5 2007 on that day also the plaintiff remained absent the court did not dismiss the suit of plaintiff for default or non prosecution it closed the side of the plaintiff in working order 17 rules 1 and 3 sub clause a of the cpc court closed the side of the plaintiff because of non reading of evidence if one did not read evidence he closed the side arguments plaintiff was absent defendant the defendant told i have no arguments court rendered judgment on merits dismissing the suit of plaintiff see from 11 2006 up to 10 2007 for nearly uh, 16 months the court gave to the plaintiff time to lead evidence it did not come forward and once the case is dismissed the party was alert he took copy of the judgment and went in appeal to the high court and in this case he we went in appeal to the uh, first appellate court first appellate court that is district judge adj chandigarh confirmed order passed by the trial court judge thereafter second appeal was filed by the plaintiff before high court of punjab high court of chandigarh uh, high court of punjab at chandigarh and the high court allowed the appeal filed by the plaintiff on the ground that huge stakes are involved property is worth 60 lakhs and they say cost i will avant court level it cost allowed appeal filed by the plaintiff matter was sent back to the trial court for hearing of the matter then the defendant went in appeal to the supreme court of india the question is what supreme court of india did the supreme court of india in this case confirmed order passed by the trial court judge and the first appellate court that is adj chandigarh the side order of high court of punjab at chandigarh and so in this case the supreme court of india this third order passed by the high court the high court 
while allowing the appeal filed by the plaintiff, second appeal, did not frame substantial question of law. That is the first opening. Number two is the court in the body of the judgment stated that huge stakes are involved. So there is need to sell side out of part by trial court, remedy to the trial court for fresh consideration. Supreme Court observed that uh, don't have misplaced sympathy on the parties. If the parties are not uh, willing to come forward and read evidence, they must thank themselves. Justice uh, R.M. Loda, as he then was authored judgment in the Bo case, Justice Loda in the judgment has uh, very finely stated in clear terms how trial courts or uh, how the high courts in many cases they act upon and the Supreme Court of India observed that litigants seek, seek and courts grant adjournments at the drop of hatch. The apex court observed at paragraph 14 of the judgment that litigants say, litigants they ask for it, and the courts grant adjournment at the drop of hat. So the apex court came very heavily on the high court narrowing the appeal, setting aside the order of the trial judge and first appellate judge and dismissed and confirmed the order passed by the trial court. This case states in clear terms that to allow application of any type, recall of any order of any type, or setting aside order of the trial court, there should be urgent reasons and must not be, I mean, and the court must take care and caution and is gone by the principles of laws laid on by the apex court. So with that, the next important point is uh, the call of witness uh, by the court should not be to fill up uh, omissions in uh, evidence of the witness. The witness has given admissions. The defendant want to get the admission withdrawn. We have moved the court for recall of PW1 on order 18, sub so of the CPC. So the apex court in the case of uh, K.K. Velu Swami versus Jan Parani Swami reported in 2011, part 11, SCC 275 observed that the court cannot allow IA to recall if it is with the sole purpose of filling up omission in evidence of the witness. So in this case, the order was authored by Justice R.V. Ravindran, as it then was in the Apex Court. So the IA was filed by the defendant at a very late stage of the case for production of compact disc CD of the talks between the vendor and buyer in the suit for agreement of sale. And uh, this one was produced by the defendant at the time of arguments by moving uh, IA under order 18 over something of the CPC. So in this case, the trial court dismissed the IA filed by the defendant for recall and, and under section 141 of the CPC. High court also dismissed the said uh, matter filed by the defendant. Supreme Court of India laid down the ratio to the effect that IA for recall cannot be allowed to fill up omission in evidence of the witness. In this case, however, the vice court demanded the matter back to the trial court to consider whether is it feasible to produce series of the talks between the parties and the matter was demanded to the trial court for consideration. So with that, the next important point is Vadi Raj Nagappa, Nagappa Veranekar versus Saraschandra Prabhakara Bogote. That is the 2009 
part 4 scc page number 410 in this case it was a suit for declaration filed by the plaintiff before the high court of bombay on its original site plaintiff led evidence by filing his uh, affidavit evidence and uh, the matter was posted thereafter for arguments of the parties because different around affidavit evidence to the stage of arguments the plaintiff filed a to recall by stating that uh, i have to clarify some doubts and that his point was his main fact was some facts i had left out in the affidavit evidence the main one was i have not mentioned in my affidavit evidence some facts that were the same are left over by mistake and on account of bona fide misconception he filed a ia to recall pw1 for filing further facts which were left over by the plaintiff single judge of uh, high court of uh, bombay dismissed the ia filed by the plaintiff for recall of pw1 for the purpose of leading further evidence on the left over points not covered in his affidavit evidence db of high court of bombay also dismissed the arrivation petition filed by the plaintiff the plaintiff went to supreme court of india supreme court of india in this case also dismissed the appeal filed by the plaintiff and confirmed order passed by the single judge of high court of bombay and also division bench of high court of bombay the apex court observed that lapses in evidence of a party cannot be cured cannot be cured by filing a for recall of the witness so the court observed that a to recall cannot be used to fill up lacuna in evidence of the witness discovered in the course of cross examination so this is the decision of the supreme court but here the bas court observed but if the purpose is to clarify doubts court can recall by itself or a party move the court court can allow the ia for recall but the main point is it must have a bearing on ultimate decision of the case if it is there then the court can recall if not the court has no power to recall the witness the next point is uh, kailas versus uh, nankhu and others 2005 part 4 scc page number 480 order 8 rule 1 ctc there is a time limit for filing of for filing of ws by defendant as i told it is firstly 30 days then lastly court can stretch up to 120 days including the first 30 days so 120 days is the outer time, time limit so this case of 2005 i will touch at the end because we have got the sense of uh, uh, the current year also and of the previous year also so i will take up in at the uh, last fact and the aspects of order 8 of the cbc regarding power of court to condone delay in filing of the ws in a given suit the next decision is uh, 2001 part 1 yes cc page number 118 so strike or boycott by the advocates as they all know is not a ground for adjournment so this is the case which is a very often quoted case authored by justice kt thomas as it was then in the apex court so by court of courts by the advocates take off the courts by the advocates for a given cause will not due to the party to remain absent so a party can go to court and represent the decision of the apex court so the next point is mahabir prasad singh versus jacks 
Aviation Private Limited, 19, 1999, Part 1, SCC, page number 37. Here also, by court of the courts of ADJ by advocates of Delhi courts was uh, the issue in the moment. The Apex Court observed that uh, it's not a ground for the court to grant it. And uh, section 24 of the CPC, question for transfer of the judge was moved for the trial of the case from the file of a given judge. And uh, the same was not uh, approved of by the High Court and the Supreme Court. The ratio is boycott by advocates of a court of a single judge of a trial court will not give to the party the right to move for adjournment. The next important point is uh, 2011 part 8 SCC page number 249 Rameshwari Devi and others versus Nirmala Devi and others. So if the other side corrupts tactics and harassment to the plaintiff by protracting the case, waste court's time and waste time of all concerned or stakeholders, court has the power to impose heavy cost for frivolous proceedings under section 35, 35A and 35B of the CPC. So this one, court has the power to levy cost in case there is abuse and misuse of the process of the court by the plaintiff or by the party concerned. The next case is namely 2012 part five, Supreme Court cases, page number 370, 370. That is Maria, Margaria, Requeria Fernandes versus Erasmo Jack D. Sequeria dead through a loss. It is 2012, part 5, SCC, page number 370. In this case, the Apex Court observed that the courts should invoke provisions of section 3030 of the CPC. 30 of CPC deals with power of the court, power to order discovery and the like. So this section 30 of the CPC is not invoked by the courts in many cases. The Apex Court observed invoke presence of or 10 of the CPC or 11 of CPC regarding discovery and inspection. So the Apex Court observed that 30 of the CPC or 11 of CPC must be invoked by the court. So, so that court will know where the case stands and it will assist the court in disposal of the case at the very earliest. So powers of court under uh, section 30 of uh, the CPC read with uh, or 11 of CPC would be a technique which will assist the court to dispose of the case at the very earliest. In the above case, the judgment was authored by Dr. Justice Dalvir Bandari, as he then was. As you know, as you all know, he is the law of is now the one of the judges of the International Court of Justice at Hague, ICJ at Hague. Uh, but he authored the above judgment. This is one of the classic judgments of the Apex Court, consisting of uh, three judges of the Apex Court. Here, the relevant uh, important uh, ratios are read on by the Apex Court at uh, RIA number 34 of uh, the order, 34 of the order of the Supreme Court. It states that a judge must not act as an umpire in a cricket match. As you all know, umpire in a cricket match, his role is to watch both sides to say whether it is a four run, I mean, uh, ball hit or six run hit, 
or whether he is out, as the case may be. So the highest court observed in the Bo case at para number 34, at page number 384, that the judge of a court should not simply act as a mere umpire at a contest between two parties and declare at the end of the combat who has won and who has lost. So his duty is to discharge duty in the matter of dispensing justice and he must not be a mute spectator. The judge must be proactive, he must intervene. If the plaintiff is harassed by the defendant or vice versa as the case may be, in the course of cross-examination, the court should cut down and regulate the court proceedings. So the apex court observed that judges should not act as mere umpires, but they should have the proactive role. And as you all know, every court and every other case duty is duty to find out where the truth lies. So advocates, they assist the court to know where the truth lies. And the first court observed that what people expect is that the court should discharge its obligation to find out where, in fact, the truth lies. That is, the verdicts of the Apex Court at para 35 of the above edition. At para 38, the Apex Court observed in a very fine manner, a judge in the Indian system has to be regarded as failing to exercise its jurisdiction and thereby discharging its duty if in the guise of remaining neutral, he opts to remain passive to the proceedings before him. He has to always keep in mind that every trial is a voyage of discovery in which truth is the quest. In order to bring on record a relevant fact, he has to play an active role. No doubt within the bounds of the law defined under the procedural law. So these words of the Apex Court in the Bo case state duty of court to regulate the court working and uh, uh, case management by him. He must be a proactive judge and he must not be a neutral spectator or act as a mere umpire. So with these important words, I will take now quickly the next important aspect that is what about the aspect of the time limit for filing of the place by the defendant in a suit. The defendant in a suit is served with suit summons. So what is the outer time limit to file the place by the defendant? We got here decision of the Apex Court of three judges, latest, that is 2020, part two, SCC 708. The case name is Desh Raj versus Bal Kishan. So in this case, the point is whether the outer limit of 30 days plus 90 days grace days, now namely 120 days is the outer limit for filing of the place by defendant, or whether the court can still condone delay if the particular the place is filed by the defendant after expiry of 120 days. So this question is answered by the Apex Court in the above case of, uh, of the current year, disposed of on 20th January 2020, Order 8, Rule 1, CPC, and uh, adjournment. So here, the point is, this limit of this one day is order limit, whether is it elastic or whether the court has power to condone delay 
in a fit case and take on record the place filed by the defendant. So in this case, the Apex Court observed that in commercial suits governed by a Commercial Courts Act as amended by the CPC, Order 8, Rule 1, and Order 8, Rule 10, Order 8, Rule 10, in case of commercial suits, over commercial courts, the outer time limit of 120 days from date of service of suit summons on the defendant is the outer time limit, that is what's called as mandatory, and court has no power to condone even a delay of two days or three days if it is a suit filed by the plaintiff before the commercial court under the Commercial Courts Act. The outer time limit of 120 days in filing the plus in a commercial suit was the issue involved in the whole case of Desh Raj versus Balkishan. The first court observed that commercial suits governed by Commercial Courts Act, then the outer, outer time limit of 120 days, the courts cannot condone. That is the ratio in the opposite case. So in this case, the facts are very interesting. The plaintiff, uh, in this case, the respondent plaintiff wanted to buy the suit property from the defendant appellant as per agreement of sale or be 7.5 lakhs. In fact, the parties are brothers. So the respondent plaintiff wanted to buy the property of the share of defendant appellant. And uh, at the end, he had paid one lakh as a plus money. That was breached by the defendant. Then the plaintiff put issued legal notice, no response. He files so before the trial court, that is the district court Rohini Courts at New Delhi against the defendant. The defendant was served of suit summons on 1 5 2017. The Apex Court noted the fact of the case. The defendant was served with suit summons on 1 5 2017. The court gave date to the defendant to file the place. The date was uh, 17 7. Then 18-7, then the next date given by the trial court judge of uh, Rooney Court was 10-11-2017 on cost of rupees 3000 and the last date given was namely 11-10-17 was the date on which the court granted the final date. On that date, the particular defendant did not file his WS. So the trial court struck off defense of the defendant and posted the matter to 3-11-2017. So the defendant did not file the place within 120 days from date of appearance before the trial court. And he moved the court for permission. The court did not grant permission. And the matter was taken up by the defendant before revision to High Court of Delhi. And High Court of Delhi, in this case, dismissed the revision on the ground that 120 days had elapsed. So the defendant went to the Supreme Court of India, challenging orders passed by the ADJ Delhi and also High Court of Delhi. In this case, the question involved was whether suit based on agreement of sale to purchase a flat is a commercial dispute or not under provisions of Commercial Courts Act of 2015. So the court discussed threadbare all the various things. It laid down that uh, agreement of sale involving involved in the suit regarding the purchase of a flat is not a commercial uh, contract, commercial dispute. It held that uh, 
the said suit is not governed by commercial courts act then the best court observed that uh, if it is not a commercial contract or commercial dispute before the commercial courts then the court has the power to condone delay in filing of the pleas by the defendant but here the supreme court of india went through the rc top the trial court and uh, it had confirmed the order passed by the trial court and also of the high court of delhi even though the suit was not a is based on commercial contract and the suit may not filed before the commercial court at new delhi the first court laid down that outer time limit of 120 days in filing the pleas in a non commercial matter that is other than a commercial suit matter travel by a commercial court the supreme court or the courts have got the power to condone delay that is or right rule one is regulatory in manner and not mandatory so court have the power to condone delay if it is not a commercial dispute under commercial contract but still in this case the press court did not condone delay confirm order of the trial court but at the end in fact under article 142 of the constitution the apex court passed the order saying that we are asking the trial court to take on record the place of the defendant on cost of rupees 25000 and that this decision should not be observed as laying down a precedent in the matter so the apex court observed in very clear terms <clears throat> that the trial court was justified in striking off the defense because of long delay beyond the <clears throat> on the limit of 120 days it added that without laying down the discretion being exercised in the case as a precedent doubles filed by the defendant on 21117 was ordered to be taken on record on cost of rupees 25000 to be paid to the plaintiff and the appeal was disposed of in terms of the above order so this ruling states that allowing of ia by the defendant for permission to file the pleas is not mechanical and even the court must do valid and cogent reasons telling which the order will be i mean modified or suggested by the higher court or the high court or the common or the apex court as the case may be so in case of commercial suits governed by commercial courts act the outer limit of 120 days is fixed no court can grant or condone delay if the appeal is not filed by the defendant within those period of 120 days from the day of service of suit summons on the defendant in case of non commercial suits the courts have got the leniency but still the leniency is subject to checks and balances and court must examine facts of each case properly to arrive at the conclusion so in that case in the previous case there was delay of 95 days in filing the place after expiry of 120 days from date of service of summons on the defendant supreme court not as a president permitted the defendant to file the place on cost so this this case this is a case not laid down ratio that court can condone delay mechanically but for this case not as a president the appeals court just ordered the trial court to take on record the place of defendant so that's the next important case is namely scg contracts india private limited versus k s chamankar infrastructure private limited that is uh, uh, 2019 part 15 scc 
210 is a case of last year here the point is in case of commercial suits under amended order 8 rule 1 order 8 rule 10 and order 5 rule 1 sub clause c amended by commercial courts act the court has no power to condone delay if the ws is not filed by the defendant within outer limit of 120 days so defendant served on a given day commercial suit travel by the, the commercial court under commercial courts act the limit is maximum is 120 days if it delays that the matter ends the plaintiff can just read evidence and just get the credit at the very earliest so the defendant no doubtless and they eventually he cannot even process on pdp one the court also will not due to the defendant time to read evidence because there is no doubtless so there is there will be a fast track procedure in case of commercial dispute under commercial courts act if the place is not filed by the defendant within the outer time limit of 120 days this is the case of scg contracts india private limited versus ks chamankar in fana structure private limited the matter was disposed by the supreme court on 19th of february 2019 or 8 rule 1 or 8 rule 10 Order five, rule one, and also order seven, rule eleven. In this case, what had happened was the defendant did not file the bills within the limit of one twenty days. He filed a year under order seven, rule eleven of CPC, praying the court to reject the plaint filed by the plaintiff. So here, the plaintiff filed objections to the said. I A filed by defendant under order seven rule eleven of the C P C, and here it so happened that uh, the trial court dismissed the said I A filed by the defendant under order seven rule eleven of the C P C, and the matter was taken to the high court. High court also confirmed the order passed by the trial court. The matter went to the apex court at the end, and the apex court uh, laid down the ratio that order eight rule one, order eight rule ten, and order five rule uh, under order five rule one surplus C of the CPC as amended for suits concerning commercial disputes under Act four of uh, 2016. The time limit is in the maximum 120 days. On expiry of 120 days from date of service of summons on defendant, the defendant shall forfeit the right to file doubles, and the court must not allow or allow or take doubles filed by the defendant. This is a Final word of Supreme Court in the Bo case: Commercial suits, commercial disputes, brought by Commercial Courts Act, time limit is 120 days, and that the above legal provision cannot be cured by moving the court by defendant under Section 151 of the CPC. Also, as the statute says, or the rule says, within 120 days, the Supreme Court observed. That one fifty one of CPC cannot be invoked by the defendant to circumvent the provisions of or eight rule one of the CPC. So in this case, the Supreme Court of India, in very clear terms, observe that the outer limit is one twenty days. The court also observe that any plea. Taken by the defendant in IA under Order Seven Rule Eleven of the CPC should be touched or stated in the WS. And without filing WS, 
the defendant cannot file IA under Order 7, Rule 11 of the CPC. So this is a very, very important decision of Supreme Court of India. IA filed by defendant under Order 7, Rule 11 of CPC. The points urged there should find place in the WS filed by defendant. In this case, the defendant had not filed WS. He filed only IA to IA under Order 7, Rule 11 of CPC. The first court observed that the same is impermissible and that is abuse of process of the court. I appear, commercial suit, the place not fight, I move the court, dismiss suit, reject the suit on the ground of 7 rule 11 of CPC. The first court observed any ground touch in our 7 rule, 1, rule 11 application, you must touch that point in that place. Without filing doubles, you cannot file IA under Art 7, Rule 11 of CPC, with ratio in the opposite case, besides the ratio of 120 days as the maximum time limit for the defendant in a commercial suit before a commercial court to file doubles. So, with that, the next important matter is namely uh, 2019, Part 15. SCC 46, that is the case of Alfana Gupta versus APG Towers. Here also the powers of the court under R7 Rule 11 was discussed. The best court observed that contentions in the IA must be raised in the WS, failing which the court should dismiss IA filed by defendant under R7 Rule 11 of the CPC. The next important point is 2018 part four, SCC page number 606, Indian Bank versus SN Engineers and Suppliers and another. So in this case, suit was filed for recovery of 10.71 lakhs against defense one and two. And one more prayer was recovery of 9.51 lakhs against the second defendant. So it was filed before the trial court. Defendant appeared and filed the place. Did not specifically deny the factum of the case of the plaintiff. So defendant filed the place and uh, did not specifically deny the plaint governments in the plaint. And the case was based on the letter of undertaking given by the bank dated 1 9 1992 and after the different filing doubles in fact not denying or disputing the case of the plaintiff the plaintiff filed IA under order 12 rule 6 of the CPC that is judgment on admission he filed application before the trial court under Order 12, Rule 6 of the CPC. And for this, the bank filed objections, but the trial court allowed the said particular AI filed by the plaintiff. And the, the, I mean, the, the allowed by the uh, single judge of High Court of Delhi. The matter was taken to the mm -hmm. bench of High Court of Delhi. It also confirmed the order passed by the single judge of Delhi High Court. Delhi High Court judge invoked the presence of Order 12, Rule 6 of the CPC and permitted the plaintiff to file his IA. And the prayer was to post the matter for judgment on admission of the defendant since the defendant did not deny the case of the defendant. In this case, the trial judge, while allowing the objection filed by the plaintiff at order 12, rule 6 of CPC, held that the appellant, namely the appellant bank, the appellant bank, namely the second defendant, failed to produce the original letter dated 1992. It added, instead, 
a xerox copy of the sir letter was filed the appeals court observed that the judgment of the trial court was confirmed by the db of the high court and that the ground for the high court of delhi division bench was that appellant made deliberate attempt to frustrate the legal right of the first respondent the plaintiff so the appeals court dismissed the appeal and observed that there is no reason to interfere with the judgment of the high court and dismissed the appeal filed by the defendant number 2 bank so this is judgment of admission see how fast the case went forward the case was disposed of very fast because the party in mokra presence of article 12 rule 6 of the cpc trial court allowed the set by a file by the plaintiff so with that the last court now is with regard to article 8 rule 1 of the cpc that is a case wherein bombay high court that is the bombay high court condoned delay of five years in the place by the defendant in question and in the second case the high court of bombay condoned delay of as many as 13 years in filing of the place by the defendant the other defendant so the senior judge of bombay high court condoned delay of five years and 11 years respectively in the two suits on payment of cost of rupees 5 lakhs the matter went to the db of high court of bombay the plaintiff took the matter to high court of bombay high court of bombay also confirmed the order of by in the bombay the court is paid and he had fast track the case now and the matter was taken to supreme court of india by the original plaintiff supreme court of india observed that the high court of bombay senior judge and db they were wrong in condoning delay of 5 years delay of 11 years and so it was this and set aside out passed by the single judge and db of the high court holding that even though court is over the matter there should be offering of proper explanation by the defendant but it not there means court cannot just allow it mechanically by the way of even every court of bombay single bench and db were set aside and the court of india ordered that the defense of the defendants is struck off so this is the decision of supreme court of india in the context of or 8 rule 1 of the cpsc which is atcom atcom technologies versus y a chuna wala and company 2018 part 6 scc page number 639 so this is atcom technologies limited versus y a chuna wala and company so i have just taken you through decisions of the apex court on order 8 rule 1 or 10 or 5 uh rule 1 or 17 rule 1 or 18 rule 17 or 12 rule 6 section 30 of the cpc section 151 of the cpc or 7 rule 11 of cpc and uh, i'm sure that these inputs which i discussed with you they are from yes or no the super point of view so the other song whatever is being told by me with regard to the positions are on the aspect of need for expeditious and speedy trial of civil cases you may kindly uh, ask me i will be glad to answer yes sir thank you sir for a repeating uh, presentation can we now move on to the q and a session sir yes sir uh, we have mr uh, satyana and gupta sir i will definitely give you a chance uh, i will start with mr ravi hegde he has a question uh, mr uh, yes, i have unmuted you sir please go ahead with your question right sir 
uh, good evening sir nice of you to uh, of course present this uh, wonderful uh, 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 report regarding uh, the aspects of the speedy justice sir you remember you happened to be pdj of karwa district yes, and i am from siddapur sir you visited our court also uh, so nice to listen to you uh, my question is um, this is regarding speedy trial can the judge invoke provision of order 18 rule 1 where it says of course right to begin uh, always that right uh, remains with the plaintiff uh, when the plaintiff's uh, contentions are denied by defendant uh, of course it says if any point of law is there to deny the contents of uh, plaintiff's uh, right uh, whether that can be invoked uh, by allowing uh, the defendant to begin his case and what is the consequences of it okay. the courts in the in many cases i'm just giving you a case like this plaintiff has filed suit defendant has filed the place court has framed the issues the matter is pushed for evidence of the plea right to be in the province of the plaintiff and the issue so also in the in a criminal trial the prosecution is not taking its case by opening its case before the court of sessions so this right is the right which the statute confers on the plaintiff of prosecution your question is can court by itself invoke or 18 or one of the cpc and lead at first evidence of defendant to his side then lead evidence of the particular plaintiff that's correct Girish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is uh, muted, so that no. is his question. This procedure is invoked in the context of trial of suits in a summary manner. Exactly. Under Thirty Seven Rule One of the CPC, plaintiff yes. files suit. He serves on the defendant notice of judgment. Defendant appears. He does not file his replies. The matter is posted now for evidence of defendant. Once he takes up the contention, the court will post the case for evidence of defendant. That is trial of case in a summary manner by the court under Order Thirty Seven Rule One of the CPC for the benefit of reader or Thirty Seven Rule Five of the CPC. That is our that is uh, that is summary procedure out of seventeen out of thirty seven will important provision in the thirty seven rules of CPC. After at the hearing of the summons for judgment, if the defendant has not applied for leave to defend, or if the application has been made and is refused the plaintiff shall be entitled to judgment for the if the defendant is permitted to defend as to the whole or any part of the claim the court or judge may direct to bring such security and within the first time as it is fixed by the court on failure to do the security Within the time specified by the judge or court or carrying out by the directions, then the plaintiff shall be entitled to judgment for it. Then, so here it is for the defendant to evidence if it disputes the case of the plaintiff. If it says something else, we have got some document, we have got to note. And the order on condition speaks of cases in which we can invoke the such provision and file suits for trial in a summary manner. So there, the court will direct the defendant to first lead evidence, then the appeal must be examined, then the appeal lead to the evidence thereafter. So there, there is shifting of the burden from the plaintiff to the defendant in case of trial of case in a summary manner. And for your question directly on order eighteen, 
human comfort, the CPC, in a case where the dependent they want to go abroad, do not be coming for one year or so. You permit me to read my evidence. Let my case be over. Then after my counsel will take care of the case. He will process the case. The plaintiff for the defendant, and the case can be heard by the court thereafter. So, in a case where the defendant pleads that he is trying to run a or to accommodate the difficulty and inconvenience of the defendant, but the court can permit the defendant to read the evidence first and then go set up defendant and then post the matter for the plaintiff. Normally, the rule is court may grant time and adjust during his or eight or eighteen one of the CPC. And in this case, the court, if deemed fit, may just go forward and it can permit the parties to do the needful. So I think I made myself more clear. Summary suit will invoke, but right to begin is the aspect wherein the plaintiff has right to begin unless the defendant admits facts alleged by the plaintiff. So, if I admit the case, in a, in a case which I told you, rule 6 of the CPC, the defendant had not denied the contents of the WS to post the matter for judgment on admission. The case just now. So here also, the court did not record the evidence of the plaintiff. It told, yes, the court allowed application. That was taken to the High Court and the Supreme Court. So the principle is, plaintiff has right to begin unless the defendant admits the facts allegedly by the plaintiff. That is the aspect of our 18 rule one. But in fit cases, as I told, travel abroad on case of the defendant being not well and he may be required to take long treatment, the court can stretch it and permit the defendant to read evidence first and then permit the plaintiff to start his case thereafter. So I think Mr. Girish now answered your query. Thank you, sir. We can have one last question. Uh, Gupta, sir, you can go ahead. Yes, sir. Sir, thank you very much for your uh, very good information on these several provisions of CPC. Now, the outer limit to file the written statement is 120 days from the date of service of summons. Now, we have come across many cases. The summons only order notice, summons under order of five rule 103 is only served. Copies of the plaint are not served. Copies of all the documents are not served. They, court bailing and the plaintiff will not come for 120 days. What the uh, defendant has to do? The plaintiff is not served personally? Right. No, no. Defendant served only the notice and order by rule 1 and 3. Order by rule 1 and 3. It should be reported. But there is no plaint. There are no documents. And plaintiff does not come to the court for 120 days. And he will be dependent, he will not give you any document. What we have to do? So the suit is uh, filed by the plaintiff? Yes. yes. Without uh, furnishing the copy of documents to be given to the other side? Yes. The service only of the suit summons? Yes. A copy of plaint on the defendant? Yes. No copy of documents? Yes. So that, uh, you can uh, wait for 120 days if the copy of the suit documents are not furnished to him? You have the right to file the place even after some time. That's correct. That's your question. Now, my question is 120 days, the plaintiff will not come to the court to, uh, to furnish the copies of the plaint and document. And uh, the, I cannot get the uh, document, copies of the documents without marking the uh, without marking them. Okay, we, we can ask the court that you can uh, move the court by application. Ask the plaintiff to furnish two copies of the plaintiff. The plaintiff will not appear before the court. 
not coming to court. Yes, he will not come to the court. Neither the council nor the party. Then the, the, the thing is, court can take it as uh, I mean, objection to IA not is not being filed. Court can hear a defendant and pass orders. Then uh, the court may direct the plaintiff to convey the above order. Then the other uh, consensus will follow. My point is, you inform the court saying that copy of the documents are not served upon you. I have filed a memo, sir. I have filed a memo before the court that I have not issued so and so documents. I mean, the best thing is the uh, application on a memo, court may not pass orders. It may take on record the memo. The best thing is, in every case, file application and so, endorse that advocate for plaintiff to accept. Hence, copy not served. Then you, you may move the court, give a short date for ob objections and get from court the order, objection not filed. Then after on the small way, let court pass the order. You will be in safe hands because court cannot, uh, I mean, refuse to grant to some more time to find the place beyond 120 days. If this step was taken by you, by filing the court the application. My point is, memo filing is fine, that's all, that's all right. But every memo which you file, the court may not pass order. The court takes on record memo filed by so and so. If I am means they number it, exchange these for options to IA, then they press it. If it is absent there for 120 days, or better service of the months on dependent, then you may go forward. Court will pass order. And if court of the keeps quiet, it can be drawn for you to contend that I had made my steps clear. I moved the court. Court did not pass the order. And that will be added benefit too to file your application to condone delay in filing a previous at a future point of time. So I think I've uh, answered your query. Uh, memo filing simply may not work out in, because I have worked there in the civil court. Uh, I was here for four years. I was here for four years. I, think I, I know you. You are appearing before me. Nice that you have maintained very good health. Your Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> as you were then, and uh, I saw you in 2014. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you are blessed with a very good health and nice to meet you and uh, talk with you today. And uh, my uh, point is, move the court by IA, asking the court to direct the plaintiff to furnish the last copy of the records of the suit, file along with the suit. As you all know, suit documents originally they won't file in court. And we know what Supreme Court did in that case. That is the suit of the plaintiff. Because plaintiff, when the matter was heard in part, he moved the court. Sir, now I have come to know it. I am to tell you, original DP note, what is the suit document? Supreme Court, at the end of the day, did not approve it all. So, I am very sure that uh, you will have the answer. You can move the court. I am not asking you to move, because my point I am saying here, because I have worked as a trial court judge, don't uh, say that so the speaker told me, sir, I am moving it. <laughs> no, I am not using your name, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Due to time constraints, sir, I will not be uh, able to take up any more questions. Uh, I, I see a lot of people raising hands, uh, including Rangarajan, sir. We will not be able to take up more questions. I'm sorry. Uh, sir, on behalf of Advocates Association, I would like to extend my uh, sincere thanks to you, sir, for today's uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I thank uh, yourself, uh, members thank of you, the Park, and uh, all the senior advocates who are before me here. It is an opportunity for me to meet them on this screen, and uh, with this pandemic being there in Bangalore on a large scale, I am very sure that uh, I could uh, communicate to them whatever I wanted to communicate. Any difficulty is there, they are free to contact me. You, you know, they have what you have my number, you can just give to them. And, uh, there to give a helping hand because my father and by empowering, if the advocate's legal query is answered, that will answer the query of the client, and thereby the court will be properly guided. My whole purpose is the 
fruits of this webinar should uh, instill in you the confidence that you have got now the, the rich knowledge which we find from the judgments of the apex court i covered nearly 20 decisions and they are all of a very valid cases i told you the facts also and uh, i'm very sure that uh, let there be some more opportunity for me also to share my few thoughts on the topic which you want to tell to me any topic you want to you want me to speak you tell me in advance i'll prepare it and i'm very happy to empower the advocates and especially my very very junior counsels appearing before the courts at bangalore and other places so thank you thank you very much vikram thank you, thank you sir thank you sir i would also like to thank uh, mr krishnamurthy padasalgi chief metropolitan magistrate bangalore for his participation i would also like to thank mr ravindra vn former district judge for his participation thank you so much sir with this uh, we will be now signing off today's uh, webinar thank you